Festering Fingerprint Vike, also known as Roundtable Knight Vike, is someone that almost every Elden Ring player has seen before to some degree. Not only was he used in promotional material, like on this cover of Game Informer, but he also happens to be this gentleman on the game's cover art. Vike's story is heavily tied to the Two Fingers, the Ancient Dragons, and the Frenzied Flame. So, in this video, we'll be diving into Vike's story and seeing what all we can learn from it. Spoilers ahead. For many players, the first time you encounter Vike will be with him invading you near the Church of Inhibition. He fights using Vike's War Spear and several different spells that can inflict the Madness debuff. Madness is a result of the influence of an outer god known as the Frenzied Flame, who we will explore a bit more later in this video. Upon defeating him, Vike drops his spear that he used against you. Vike's War Spear clarifies that both Vike and his weapon have been tormented by the Yellow Flame of Frenzy which seems like a good initial explanation for him being hostile towards the player due to a maddening affliction. More importantly, Vike also dropped something called a fingerprint grape, and its description reads, Eyeball of the Knight Vike, inflamed yellow, seared with a repulsive fingerprint burn akin to those that marred his entire body. If offered to the blind maiden, it will lead her to the source of the distant light, allowing her to become a finger maiden. Upon entering the Church of Inhibition, we find a dead woman that gives the Finger Maiden set, which is something that we'll need to remember for later. To continue Vike's quest, you must find someone named Irina in the Weeping Peninsula. She asks you to deliver a letter to her father, Edgar, who is defending Castle Morn's treasure from a rebellion of its servants known as the Misbegotten. Once you return to her location, it seems she fell victim to another band of Misbegotten while you were gone. After helping Edgar defend the castle's treasure, you can find him by Irina's body, mourning the tragedy. Yet. Their story doesn't end here. At some time between when Irina is killed and when you deliver her letter to Edgar, a woman named Hieta appears in Liurnia. The first thing you'll notice is that her appearance, voice, and clothes are all seemingly identical to Irina's. She explains that she has had weak eyesight since birth, which is ominously familiar to Irina's dialogue. My eyesight's been weak since birth, you see. She searches for a distant light with the help of... grapes? Vike's fingerprint grape is accounted for, but she asks for something called Shabriri grapes. One can be found in Stormvale Castle by this NPC who wants to donate his grapes to a maiden, and a second one is in the Purified Ruins in Eastern Liurnia, which is by another location that you can find Hieta. Shabriri grapes are described as oozing eyes of the infirm, people who were driven mad by the frenzied flame. Hieta seems to be unaware that they are human eyeballs, and she happily devours them. The final grape can be dropped by Edgar, the Revenger, who invades you at the Revenger's shack in Western Liurnia. The fact that Edgar has this Shabriri grape suggests he somehow became afflicted with the Yellow Flame of Frenzy after Arena's death. Could this tie into Hieta's mysterious resemblance to Arena? Regardless, Hieta eats this grape as well, but if you tell her that she has been eating human eyeballs, you can hear her vomiting once you step away. She gets over it pretty quickly though. If you reload the area and talk to her again, she describes how despite her eyesight being weak, she can pursue the distant light with the help of the eyes of others, and she requests that you find a fingerprint grape for her, which only grow on what she describes as those clasped by the burnt fingers. This grape, being Vike's own eyeball, meets this criteria, showing that he was clasped by these fingers in the past. She happily eats the fingerprint grape, stating that she is sure that with the guidance of these eyes, she will one day become a Finger Maiden. Now that we know a little more about the Frenzied Flame, let's examine the context of Vike's invasion a bit closer. The Church of Inhibition is in northern Liurnia, and just next to it you can find the Frenzied Flame village. This village is filled with humans and rats who are clearly insane from the effects of the Frenzied Flame. Here, you can find the Shabriri's Woe Talisman and the Howl of Shabriri Incantation. These items describe a man who was found guilty of slander, likely against the Golden Order, or the Two Fingers, and his eyes were gouged out. Eventually, the Blight of the Frenzied Flame came to dwell in these sockets, making Shabriri the origin of the sickness of the Flame of Frenzy, which is attributed to the entity known as the Three Fingers. Shabriri is also the name of the Demon of Blindness in Jewish lore, emphasizing the theme of blindness in those related to the Frenzied Flame in some way. However, the most interesting thing found in this village is this phantom NPC's dialogue. He mourns the fact that Vike never became the Lord of Frenzied Flame, despite how close he came to it. 
We know Vike is still alive at this point in time, since he can invade you in a nearby area, but what stopped Vike from becoming a lord? To answer this, we must turn our eyes to the mountaintops of the giants. Shortly after entering the mountaintops, you see an NPC that looks like someone that you may have previously met named Yura. Yura's questline up to this point has been about hunting a group of tarnished that kill their own kind, known as the Bloody Fingers. He's a fairly sensible and friendly character, so unless you happen to have witnessed him dying earlier in the game, he should be a welcoming sight for players. However, upon speaking to him, you learn that the person standing before you is Shabriri himself using Yura's body as an avatar. This sounds eerily similar to Hieta using what seems to be Arena's body to talk to you, but we should emphasize the fact that Arena's body seems untouched during Hieta's quest, while Shabriri claims to be using what was Yura's corpse. Shabriri explains to you that in order to burn the air tree to continue your quest to become Elden Lord, you must sacrifice the one acting as your maiden, being Melina, as kindling for the flame. He recognizes that you may not want this outcome, so he proposes a solution. If you meet the three fingers beneath Langdell, you can use the frenzied flame's power to burn the air tree instead. We know that Vike was once clasped by these fingers, and you can do the same to protect your maiden from her fate. Upon investigating Langdell, you can find the subterranean shunning grounds, a sewer system designed to function as a prison for those such as murderers and heretics. At the bottom, you can find a boss named Moog, the Omen, which seems to be a physical projection of Moog, the Lord of Blood. Whatever the true nature of the Three Fingers is, it seems that Moog does not want you to find them. Hitting this wall back here opens a secret path, leading to the Frenzied Flame Prescription. This area is filled with people imprisoned deep underground, and they resemble the nomadic merchants you meet throughout the game. Making your way to the bottom, you can find the Nomadic Merchant Set, which explains that these merchants were imprisoned for heretical beliefs, but would then summon the Flame of Frenzy with a chant of despair. Upon reaching the bottom of this tomb, you can find Hieta if you've managed to complete her quest. She instructs you to strip yourself of your armor and meet the Three Fingers, just as Vike did before you. Behind the fingerprint marked walls of the tomb, you can find the Three Fingers, and be marked by the fingerprints of the Frenzied Flame. These marks resemble the prints found on Vike's armor, but, as you may recall, Vike is still alive somewhere, and now you are a contender to become the Lord of Frenzied Flame, just as he was. After giving Hieta a quick little taste of the Frenzied Flame, she gives a bit more context to the goal of the Three Fingers. All that there is came from the One Great, the Greater Will. However, this includes every sin, every curse, and the only way to cleanse the world's afflictions is to melt it all away with the yellow flame of chaos. Hieta did reach her goal of becoming a finger maiden, but instead of serving the two fingers and their vision of order, she aligns with the three fingers and their chaos-driven goal of melting everything away so that all may become one, just as it was before creation. Whether you've accepted the frenzied flame or not, you can later find the Lord Contenders Everjail in the mountaintops of the Giants. Everjails, if you weren't aware, are magical dimensional seals that are used to imprison all sorts of dangerous individuals inside of each one. This Everjail, upon entering it, is shown to house none other than the Round Table Knight Vike. This version of Vike fights without the usage of any of the Frenzied Flame's powers, and instead fights with lightning-based weapons and spells, suggesting that this could represent a past version of himself. Upon his defeat, he drops his armor set and the incantation Vike's Dragon Bolt, who refers to Lanciax, the ancient dragon. Lanciax was able to take the form of a human priestess of the Dragon Cult, and she seems to have cooperated with the Knights of the Round Table in the past. Vike's Dragon Bolt says that of all the Round Table Knights, Vike was her favorite, explaining why Vike is able to channel the lightning of the ancient dragons in his fight against you. Finally, the fingerprint set that Vike drops holds the final piece of the puzzle of his story. Iron armor singed and blistered by fingers, worn by Vike, Knight of the Round Table Hold. No other tarnished was closer to the throne of Elden Lord than Vike, but without announcement, Vike traveled far below the capital and was scorched by the Flame of Frenzy. Did he make his choice for his maiden, or did some other force lure him with suggestion? Vike was on the path to become Elden Lord, 
He had the support of the two fingers, an ancient dragon, and his own finger maiden. But when the time came to sacrifice his beloved maiden to burn the air tree, the man named Shabriri, an advocate for the frenzied flame, enticed him with the alternative solution of meeting the three fingers to burn the air tree without giving up his maiden. Shabriri seems to be aware of the importance of a maiden to a tarnished, as he makes a similar case to the player for how you can protect Melina. This could explain why Hieta takes on the appearance of Arena, and why Edgar is afflicted with madness. Edgar may have struck some sort of deal with Shabriri for the sake of his daughter. I mean, who could resist this upturned, almost flirtatious smile? Now, you may recall the maiden found at the Church of Inhibition. This was almost certainly Vike's maiden, who died shortly after Vike met with the Three Fingers. Every person who has ever attempted to control the Frenzied Flame eventually succumbed to madness, and Vike is no exception, likely being the cause of the death of his maiden and the spread of Frenzy to the nearby village. Vike was later captured and imprisoned, preventing him from continuing the spread of the maddening Yellow Flame. Vike was the closest to becoming Elden Lord before you, and was nearly the Lord of Frenzied Flame as well, but he would only be met with failure, being unable to save even the maiden that he tried so desperately to protect. Now, you can take his place. Will you take the throne and become Elden Lord? Or will you melt all the pain of the world away in a chaotic flame? Maybe there was some reason hidden deep beneath Vike's madness. We see the fractured world of Elden Ring is filled with suffering and grief, and returning to nothing may be the only escape in the lands between. With madness being the only status that is usually afflicted on both the user and the recipient, Mutually assured destruction seems to be at the core of the frenzied flame's identity. If Vike killed his maiden, that may have been a mercy in his eyes. After all, the inescapable frenzy incantation, which afflicts both parties with madness through a point-blank stare, explains, to gaze into another's eyes is truly the most intimate form of human contact. Let me know your thoughts and what you make of all this in the comments, along with anything else I may have missed or misinterpreted. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.